On this episode of the Hyperfast Agent Podcast, we are joined by Michael Lafito from Lux in Chicago. Listen in as Michael speaks at the Hyperfast Sales Summit. We hope you enjoy. Awesome. That was a great video. I want to I want to get a get a copy of that. Well, I got a lot of visuals. I got some handouts. I got some prizes. We got a little bit of everything. I I, I want you to stand up right now. Everybody stand up where you're at. I understand the, the sugar lows after lunch are hitting in and you got to loosen up a little bit. However you do it, social distance, get loose. And uh, those of you that are on Zoom back home, do the same thing because sitting in front of a monitor the whole time is even more difficult to keep your attention than it is at a live event. So good job, have a seat, get a little blood flow, and let's get rolling over here. You learning something today? All right, well, make sure, make sure you let Carrie and Dan know about the nuggets, I call them nuggets that you're learning. I got some visuals, we're gonna be giving handouts. The first uh, prize I have for, I want Alyssa, come on up here, Alyssa, has been uh, huge for me because I messed up. I, I almost didn't know I was supposed to be here. I thought I was gonna be teaching this virtually. And, and if it wasn't for Dan, uh, if it wasn't for Carrie, uh, maybe someone else uh, event, I would have said, I'm gonna do it virtually, but I didn't wanna miss it for you. So, uh, but you were instrumental in coordinating and getting the flight for me. And I called her last night at 11.30 as there was an issue with the hotel and guess what? she picked up. So I'm going to give you a copy of my book, so uh, Luxury Listing Specials. Okay. I, and then I have another book I'm going to hand out. This gentleman, uh, the, the, the guy that we were talking about swiping right earlier, the best dressed man in the, in the crowd. You come in from what, Colorado? Yes, you come in from Colorado to be here. Anybody else out of state? Raise your hand. Uh, where's the farthest somebody was from? Colorado. Anybody else? San Francisco, oh man, it's a far, Oregon, man, that's amazing. That tells you, and the hyper fast team, I mean, again, how powerful this team is and the association. This is the third conference, I believe, okay? And uh, so let's give it a round of applause that everybody got on a flight, first off. I know everybody's got different, everybody's got different comfort levels as to where you're gonna travel, but this gentleman, and I, I'm not gonna say it verbatim, stand up and tell everybody after my training what you, you told me, and I, I got a prize for you because you made my day with that. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> uh, I just forgot to tell everybody that I've been following this podcast religiously from the past couple months. I actually know you can be here, and it, it honestly didn't click to me until you were going to say it. Uh, I've been following you since the No, no, you're uh, good. You're <laughs> what I can be doing um, to start getting clients that are at that higher price point. And, and, and so first off, let's hear it for him. He's here. Okay. So welcome. And, and my answer, my answer to him was as a 23 year old, yes, there's some limiting beliefs like, oh, he might be young. He might not have a Rolodex of high net worth individuals. So a lot of his friends are first time buyers or renters. So so what can he do? Well, I said, it's real easy. Grow your network, okay? Network with others, join a chamber, okay? Be likable, be trustworthy, okay? If, you go to, if you're a chamber member or you're going to a networking event, people remember you, stand out, you're well-spoken, you're a good looking guy, trust. You know, Daniel Kamen, Nobel Peace Prize winner once said, people would rather do some business with someone they like and they trust rather than someone they don't even if that likable person is offering a lower quality product and service at a higher price. Let that resonate. 
People would rather do business with someone they like rather than someone they don't, even if this person offers a lower quality of product and service at a higher price. Now I say, higher, do a, you know, I, I tell people offer a higher quality product and be likable and it's a win-win, okay? Okay, I have a, a, a prize for Dan and Carrie. Come on up here, Dan and Carrie, come on up. This is prize giveaway over here. So these guys are gonna wear some Lux swag here proudly. So wow. uh, so this one's for, well, let me give the lady first. This one's for you, okay? Thank you. And then Dan, this one's for you. So let's get a picture up here with the, the specialist here. Where's my photographer? There you go, get that one up there. All right, you let's, want to be in the middle? No, oh, I don't want to be in the middle. All right, let's 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 hear for the luxury swag specialist. Oh. All right, thanks guys, right, appreciate thanks. it. Thank you. All right, let's get let's get right into things here. I'm already down to 55 minutes, but let's start. We're gonna make up for it. All right, so we're gonna talk about, those of you that saw my presentation in the middle, uh, in the right before, or right after lunch, excuse me, I talked about breaking into luxury. I talked about increasing your average sale price. A lot of things I talked about were mindset, developing a blueprint, increasing your conversion so you get more luxury listings. So today, right now, this session is gonna be more on, I'll talk about best listing appointment strategies, do's and don'ts, I'll kind of carry over from, from this morning a little bit. But I'm also gonna talk about, great, you got that high end and luxury listing. What are you gonna do from here on out? How are you gonna get it sold? Because in most markets, those upper end properties aren't moving quickly. For example, on Friday, I'm gonna be putting a $10.5 million home on the market in Chicagoland. Do you know how many homes in Chicagoland, single family homes, not vertical condo, penthouses or whatever, but single family homes in Chicagoland, I say Chicago, really Illinois, because if it didn't happen in Chicago land, it didn't happen downstate, okay? How many homes in Illinois have $10 million and above have sold in the last two years? One, and it sold for 10 million even. Yet there's nine on the market, ours is soon to be the 10th. So that's 20 years of inventory. If it takes one, if, every two years, if you could sell one, and there's 10 of them, it takes 20 years to get all of them sold, 20 years. Now, my good friends over at Keeping Current Matters, they have some great visuals and they talk about when there's seven or more months of inventory, we call that a buyer's market, seven months. There's 20 years of inventory. So I can't do the same things as everybody else. So you might not have a $10 million listing, but you have that difficult listing. You have a unique listing. So bless you. We're gonna be talking about best strategies to get those sold here today as well. So review this morning, I, or I say this morning, but review my first session and we're talking about the actual listing appointment. Again, some nuggets for you. If you're going on an upper end or a luxury listing appointment and it's, the new, it's new for you and you've never sold a million or two million or fill in the blank before, what keeps you awake at night? What if they ask me this? What if they ask me how many have I sold? What if, what if, what if, what if? Okay, so what are some things you can do to be more confident? Well, a couple things, do your, do your research, know your numbers, know how many sales there are, okay? Know what the migration patterns are, know where your feeder markets are, okay? So uh, I'm in Chicago, we have more people leaving than coming, okay? But have, you know, build relationships with those corporations that are coming to your city. Position your home more effectively. I literally have a book and I'll pass it around so you can see it, those that are here. Uh, actually with COVID, I better not. But um, I, you can see it afterwards if you want. But I, I, I wrote a book called Outside the Box and it's a picture book. It's all pictures of various style of homes and the before pictures and the after. Basically before they hired me and after. Now the after isn't just about staging. The after is what did we accentuate? Okay, what did we accentuate? I'll never forget, I did not, for good reasons, gentlemen, if you're in the room and you're married, you know what I'm going with this, but I did not go pick my wife's wedding dress 15 years ago. No interest in it, no guys do that, I don't think. But, but my, I remember my wife distinctly, she was telling me that it was unique experience. They, they, they made sure that the, seamer, the seamstress and all that, they, they made sure they accentuated her figures. Okay, okay, that was important with the dress. Well, 
your job and my job, we're in a Tinder industry, people swipe left and right, okay, is to accentuate the best features of the home. There's nothing in MLS Rules 101 that so, says you have to show every pictures uh, of every, all the bathrooms or all the bedrooms. You want to accentuate the best features, the millwork, you know, something that's unique about the property. Very rarely for my high end and my luxury properties am I showing photos of multiple bedrooms. I usually show in my market now, our, our real estate company, and due to everything that's going on right now, we, we call it, I guess, the primary bedroom right now or the owner's suite. It's not PC to call it the master bedroom, but I, I sometimes say that accidentally. But the primary bedroom I show prim primarily is the only bedroom I show. I very rarely will show pictures of the second or the third or the fourth bedroom. Now it's listed in the details of the home. Okay, I want people to swipe right on mine, like, wow. Another thing, now why am I telling this to you when you're on the listing appointment? Because when you're on the listing appointment, you've got to talk to the seller about the value, how you're an expert. You don't just throw it on the computers and have your photographer, hey, take some photos, let me know when you're done. No, I'm a recovering perfectionist, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, but I'm a micromanager when it comes to the photos and the description and the videos because we want people to swipe right on yours because people search for homes in their underwear and uh, on, on their smartphone. And they're gonna go, nope, nope, wow, look at this. So I'm looking for money pictures. The other thing I always look for, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'm not gonna, when we market your home, look at any of my listings, go ahead and look at the photos. You'll notice the quality, but you'll also notice I don't do the same things as everybody else. You don't have a picture of the home. And then here you are in the foyer. And then the picture number three is the formal living room. Then picture four, I don't do that. I know a lot of you don't know me. I'm a high energy guy, maybe a little ADD. You gotta keep my attention. So I'm gonna come with the best. I'm gonna lead with some amazing photos. They're not in sequential order of the floor plan. Some people, when they land on picture number one, they go, I guess that would be left. They go to the last photo. So I make sure you have amazing photos on the tail end either. And then I bunch the so-so ones in the middle, if you will, or towards the tail end. Okay, so just giving you some ideas. More pictures don't always mean the better, but you gotta also give enough pictures. Okay, you gotta give enough pictures. All right. Let's get back to the slide deck. Uh, I'm gonna be sharing with you some of the content from my second part of our designation. Our designation part one is what we call attract more listings. Part two is market your listings. Today, we're gonna to be primarily talking about best marketing practices for your properties. This is the Empire Mansion. Again, I'm a recovering perfectionist, but I've had three, three times we've sent our photography team out there. So this is the back of the Architectural Digest most beautiful home for sale. It's currently listed for 7.5 million, okay? 7.5 million, okay? What did we do? The first time I noticed, the first time we did the photos, I noticed that his office lights weren't on and there were some other lights on. So I made sure everything looked good. I walked outside, because I, 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 I'm a, OCD this way, I wanna make sure all the lights were on, okay? You can't just throw your keys to photography. The photographer is gonna miss stuff. You have to make sure the home is ready. You are the expert. You know what to accentuate. You know what to downplay, okay? So I wanted the little sprayer fountains on, okay? Those aren't superimposed in there. I know it's hard to see, but those were on. They look even better in the video, okay? Now it was, a, it was kind of a gloomy day. So that is a superimposed skyline by my friends at boxbrownie.com. If you're not sure, go to boxbrownie.com. Anybody have an account with them? Oh, if you, oh, half of you don't even know about them. Write that down. That's a writer downer. Boxbrownie.com. You know them out of Australia, right, Kerry? They're, they're a great resource to have. And they will, for a dollar sixty each photo, no minimum, you can do one photo at a time, they will blue the sky, okay? They'll make sure it looks clean. And if you use the promo code luxury, you get $40, same as cash. Go to boxbrownie.com, use the code luxury. 
All right. This is the one I'm listing on Friday, 10.5 million. Is this a unique image right here, the angle? I told my drone guy, by the way, he was there nine hours. I was there five and a half hours. I had to go because we had uh, uh, football practice. But we were there nine hours. He was there from noon to after 9 p.m., him and two others. I walked him through the property. I told him, if you're not sure, take multiple angles. If you're not sure, take an angle with the drone and the handheld. I told him the angles I was looking for with the drone. I'm not gonna, th this is unique. I have all, obviously other uh, angles, but it's different, it's unique. That's what you want. You don't wanna do the same things as everybody else. All right. Selling a lifestyle. You're not just selling a home. You're not just selling bricks and mortar. You're not just selling a cedar home or a brick home or a vertical condo or a townhouse. You're selling the location, the lifestyle. What do you get with the home? What do you get with the area? Okay, that's really important. This was a video we were selling a home that backed up to a lake. I shot a video. That was my assistant and her daughters. I made sure we had a plan B. By, by, by the way, parents in the room, raise your hand, any parents? Do you gotta have a plan B, plan C, plan D? Event, when you're hosting an event, you gotta have a plan B, C, D. There's a no-show, you know, tech team messed up, whatever. You gotta have plans B, C, and D, and you gotta be quick on your feet, okay? So when you work with a drone company, make sure they have a backup drone in case it hits the, the tree or something, okay? This case, we got the crew on a pontoon boat, but I made sure we had a backup pontoon boat in case my clients didn't start. And guess what? Plan B came into effect. Okay, you gotta have a plan B, C, D, F, and G, okay? Selling a lifestyle. So the seller, this is one way you can differentiate yourself, by the way, on the listing appointment. Get as much information as possible. Take notes. When I went on this $10.5 million listing appointment, I took detailed notes. I didn't bring my laptop. Again, nobody cares how much you know until they know you care. I build rapport, rapport, rapport. Be likable. Be likable. Okay? Do research on them ahead of time. I shared with you a great resource that I use called Forewarn. I did research on them. I looked them up. I Googled them. I, I want to know what their likes are what their interests are. Oh, your husband rides a Harley, so do I. You like football, so do I. Okay, build rapport and find some, some similar interest. Oh, you went to Georgetown, so did I, whatever it is. Build rapport, find similarities. And I mentioned it earlier, for those of you that weren't in this room, but I am a big advocate. I'll look at Dan. He's ABM, baby. Always be marketing. Does he look good in that shirt or what? Huh? So you're welcome. I, 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 what's that? Hey, Kerry did good. He's a good looking guy, isn't he? He did better though, didn't he? Yes, he did. All right. In football, we like to say you outkicked your coverage, Dan, okay? That's a compliment to, to her, your wife, by the way. All right, so I like to differentiate myself on the listing appointment, and that's the key. So I try to get as much information as possible. I like figuring out what the story is. First off, when I pull up on a multi-million dollar listing appointment, first off, I, I, I park down the street firsthand. I'm checking to make sure I look good. I get my bag ready, because when I pull up, I assume that the kids are at the, he's here, mom. They're watching. I also assume I'm being watched and listened to. I assume that they have audio. So there's going to be hot mics. So if you're walking with the team, like, oh, look at that wallpaper. They heard you probably. Okay. So even when you don't think they're listening, they're listening on these multi-million dollar properties. You're being watched. You're being looked. So as I approach the property, I'm scanning, I'm looking, I'm looking, is there deferred maintenance? Is there landscaping, any power washing? Is any first impressions that, that stand out that need to be addressed, okay? And I'm doing the same in my tour of the home. 
So when I meet them, I shake them, I look them in the eye. I know this sounds basic rule 101, but ladies and gentlemen, give the owner a firm handshake and look them in the eye. You know, my kids are knuckleheads with a lot of things, but one thing I have taught them really well with is I, they always get compliments when I meet people and they, sh they, they got firm handshakes. That exudes confidence, okay? It's, there's nothing worse than a dead fish handshake, ladies and gentlemen, okay? So I look them in the eye and then I, everybody has different thoughts. Some, some real estate coaches say be first. Some people say go last. I like being first. I like setting the bar so darn high that they keep looking back saying, the other reason I like setting the bar high, those of you that were here in the morning, raise your, or my first session, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you weren't here in the first session. Okay, a couple of you. So I gave this example, Dan was sitting here and I talked about Dan was a luxury seller. Remember that Dan? I said, Dan, if somebody knocked on your door, what price would you come up with if somebody asked you how much your house is? And Dan said $3 million. And I said, Dan, if you don't mind me asking, how did you come up with that price? Did you interview other agents? Did you get an appraisal? He said, well, that's just kind of what I think things are based on the how much things are appreciating over the last 8.7 years. I'm kidding around, but he's very analytical and you know, that's what he thought. My point is that when you're sitting down with these people, you want to build rapport. But before you even sit down with them, I like to say, Dan, before we sit down, I want you to feel comfortable, of course. We're gonna to tour the home while we're standing. Where, where, do you, where do you wanna sit? I liked asking them, where do you wanna sit? He might say out back by the pool, in the cigar room, in the hearth room. Don't assume kitchen table. Okay, no offense, and I have Cutco knives, but that's where the Cutco knife guy sells you his knives, at the kitchen table. I want them to feel comfortable in their own environment. So I asked them, where, where, where's most comfortable for you? I want to set my stuff down here and let's go on the tour. Okay. So I'm just sharing with you what happens, what I like doing. But the other thing I like doing, remember when I asked you about the price with Dan, Dan, just so you know, you mentioned to me in this example, you said you were interviewing Keller Williams and compass Remember in that role play, you mentioned you're talking to a couple other agents and you told me that you and your wife built this home. It's custom. It's unique. It's one of a kind, whatever, fill in the blank. Do me a favor. If those other agents you interview, if they come in with their, you know, their pretty binder and say, this is the, these are the comparables, here's what your price is worth the first time they've walked through your unique custom home where you showed me all the upgrades and, and the stonework and the millwork and how they cut your American cherry floors right here on the spot, all this unique stuff. How did they factor that in? So if they come with a prepared price, if I were you, I'd walk them to the door. You see, I never talk price on the first appointment at a luxury unique listing, unless it's cookie cutter, unless it's in a gated community and the same builder and the same home just sold recently. Those are exceptions to the rule. But you see what I've just done? I've disqualified the other two people that are interviewing. So now when you interview Keller Williams or, or, or fill in the blank and they come in and they say, well, Marcus, here's what we think your home's worth. You're thinking, Mike was right. How the heck are they telling me what my house is worth when they haven't even walked it first? They haven't even seen my American cherry floors and, and my, my Jerusalem limestone foyer that the uh, floors that they flew in. Okay, they, they haven't seen any of that. You see what I've just done there? Okay. Now, determining price for luxury properties, unique properties is difficult, very difficult. Okay, sometimes you can use price per square foot. Sometimes you can use the cost approach. Okay, I like, I have a Rolodex of a couple top tiered luxury appraisers. They work with banks. They work with the banks that do new construction, custom builds. Okay, so there's not a one size fits all determining price. All right. So I'm gonna keep going here. So when I am about to go to market with the home, these are the questions I like finding out from the owner. Okay, I like to know what's unique about the inside of the house, the outside. We put together special feature sheets. So again, you have great print collateral for right brain guys, but Dan, I give Dan this brochure. He's gonna say, that's cool, but he wants to know about the mechanicals. He wants to know about the, the, how thick the walls are and what, what products were used and all that. So you have to have special feature sheets for the left brain analytical, and you gotta have powerful, great visuals. Now, have I ever sold a home because a nice, pretty brochure? Probably not, but it's got me a lot of listings. I never forget, I was uh, a year ago, I was on a listing appointment. Guy interviewed six people, million dollar plus listing. 
afterwards, he said, he called me a couple days later, he says, between you and somebody else, I got two questions for you. That nice, pretty, hard barn brochure that you brought and gave me, if you hired, if we hired you, would we also get that? By the way, I knew when he asked me that it was mine. But I said, yeah, yeah, you'd get that. And he goes, the other question I have for you is, I was in sales previously. You never asked for the listing. You never asked for the sale when you were here. I said, well, I'm glad you brought that up, Dan. You see, everybody's got different philosophy. Some, some real estate coaches, I won't mention, they say you go there with the listing agreement and you don't leave until you get the listing agreement. You see, my philosophy is I've never been in the arm twisting business. So I said to Dan, I said, Dan, my philosophy is I, I feel like I gave so much evidence as to why I'm the right hire for you in that hour. And if you even have to hesitate, I'm not the right guy, but I can promise you if you hire me, I'm going to fight for every one of your dollars like it's mine. He says, you're so, and he hired me, okay? So I share that with you. Let's go over other common objections on the listing appointment. How many have you sold in this market? Be honest, always be honest. So if you haven't sold any, leverage your team or your office, okay? If your office hasn't sold many, then be honest with them. Say, you know what? I have a proven system in blank area or a certain price point, but I'm here to tell you, if you want the same old, same old, you can hire those agents. By the way, there's over a year of inventory above $2 million or fill in the blank. Einstein says, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. Why would you hire the same agents when it's a buyer's market and your price point? But if you want to hire somebody that's aggressive, that thinks outside the box, is hungry, you call, you're going to get me. You're not going to get passed off to an assistant or assistant or assistant. You're going to get me. Then I'm the right guy and then fill in your story. I don't care what your story is, whether you were an electrician, a, a seamstress, a, a union worker, whatever it is. I know there's a lot of people that do real estate part-time. I was a former part-time agent. Fill that in. I was a teacher. I was a high school physical education teacher. I told that story. I'm used to working with people from different learning backgrounds and languages. And, and I understand that you gotta be hands-on and have some good visuals. And, and I understand that there's two types of negotiators. There's collaborative negotiators, win-win, and there's combative. I'm going to get the best for my client, win-lose. You see, I understand that, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. Okay, so I know I'm going off on a tangent, but I want you to feel confident to go on that actual appointment. So let's move forward. You got the listing. It's not live yet. What are you going to do till you hit that live button? Again, put together a special feature sheet. Talk to the builder. Talk to the architect. Maybe if the previous owners are in the area, get the story as to why they chose this location. You got to tell stories. You got to be a good storyteller. Okay, tell the story of the home. Okay. Has the home been featured in publications, et cetera? Again, communicate with the property. And I sold Michael Jordan, not sold, I wish I did. It's been on for nine years. But Michael Jordan. The greatest athlete of my generation, people say Muhammad Ali, Michael Jordan, like they're, they're in a league of their own, so to speak. Yeah, Kobe won his fourth, Jordan six and all, by the way, in championships. That's another story. I'm a Jordan fan. Six championships, this guy. Home's been on the market for nine years. The Chicago Bears traded for Khalil Mack, uh, highest paid him the highest NFL contract for a defensive player on September 1st of 2000. I guess it would be 18. Within a day, not... He got traded. It was announced at 9.02 on September 1st. It was Saturday morning. By 5.30, my phone is ringing. I have a high-profile client. He just got traded to the Bears. We want that for you. We want you to be in a discussion. Have you Googled yourself lately? How does your social media look? Is your branding consistent? How's your website look? Okay. You have to do a SWOT analysis of your own brand, your strengths, your weaknesses, are there opportunities? Can you, can you strengthen something that's an opportunity? Is there a threat in your marketplace? That's a SWOT analysis. So I showed Michael Jordan's home, okay? I didn't sell it, he didn't buy it, he bought another property and he actually used the, the agent the Bears uh, recommended, uh, but I was in the discussion and that's what you want. You wanna be in that discussion. When someone's about buying a home in your market, selling a home. Someone's thinking about selling. Right now, I have a buyer's uh, buyer that contacted me. He's been looking for a home in my marketplace for three years with two other agents. One was a, dare I say it, a Redfin agent, and the other was another agent. And he called me. He said, I've been looking for homes in this market for a couple of years. 
it seems like every home that we see, it, you're the listing agent. So I'd like to buy a home through you. I said, I respect agency. I said, have you signed anything with the buyers? No, it's my, it's my wife's good friend's mom. So he's gonna buy through me if it's an off-market property, and if it's listed in the MLS, he's gonna buy through them. Just telling you stories, be the mayor of your community, build rapport, be the leading expert. How do you do that? We'll keep talking about that as we go. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. I like to know who the buyer is for your property. Now I understand fair housing, there's things you can and can't say. For example, my seller, I, I, have a, I had a second showing this morning on a $1.8 million listing. And the, the seller, my client says, do they have kids? They, he wanted me to find out as much as I can. And so I did research as I, I could on the person, but you can't, there's things you can't say and ask, okay? If you're not sure, talk to your broker on that stuff, but you wanna figure out who your avatar is. You got one time to make a first impression when marketing any home. Migration patterns, where, where are your feeder markets? You need to know that. A lot of times title companies, your MLS, your real estate board can provide you with a lot of this data. And even if it doesn't help you get your home sold, if you talk about it on a listing appointment, you're gonna differentiate yourself. The other agents primarily don't talk about it. All right, you have a listing. I need you to look at, remember I said SWOT analysis, strength, weakness, opportunity, threat. You need to develop a SWOT analysis for every one of your listings. Why your listing? Why should somebody buy your listing over the competition? From a maintenance standpoint, has your client been proactive and has a, a preventative maintenance plan on the furnace and the roof and all these things? From a value standpoint, why your listing over the competition? From a location, location, location standpoint. From a this home is less of a headache than that home. From a value standpoint. Many times you got to get the buyer's agent on board. So those of you that were here this morning, or in my first session, you probably didn't realize why I have this. So when I put my listings on the market, I want to put everything on a silver platter. So the buyer's agent looks like a rock star. They want to show my listings because our special feature sheets are detailed. Our brochures are amazing. I pay them well. Okay, I pay them well. I was selling a two million, excuse me, a two point five million dollar listing in a town called River Forest. A lot of Frank Lloyd Wright homes there, just outside the city. We were paying four percent payout. Four. Do the math. Two point five times four percent. What is that? Hundred thousand dollars commission. The guy up the street that was listed at four million dollars, he was paying out two percent. So again, remember I told you I, I, I got a bonus item for anybody that answers this. Let's see here. Uh, got to copy my book for the person, first person that answers. What's the most listened to radio station out there? What's that stand for? Yes, sir. What's in it for me? Come on down. The price is right. Come on down. Okay. So what's in it for me? Thank you. Good luck to you. Where are you from? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. I love Las Vegas. Okay. So we know, you know, and I know, we have a fiduciary responsibility to the buyer. No matter if I'm paying out 1%, 100 bucks, 3%, 4%. But you think a buyer's agent knows what they're getting paid on some of these properties? You think they look? Maybe you don't, good for you if you don't, but many do, many do. So that might be something you consider on one of your stale luxury listings, incentivizing, offering a bonus, a time incentive. 50,000, 5,000, 100,000, 1,000 dollar bonus if under contract by November 1st. Whatever the date is, put a, put a deadline on, create urgency. It's very difficult to create urgency in a buyer's market. In a seller's market, you can cut some corners. Your photos, excuse my language, Carrie, your photos might suck and you might still get your property sold because it's a seller's market and you're gonna get a line out the door anyways. But in a buyer's market, you can't cut corners. You got to do the things that your competition isn't willing to. So that's the silver platter right there. I'm gonna, your special feature sheet. These are two examples of special features. One is more bullet point. A little's got some written. Those are usually five to seven pages long. I literally, and I have the notes 
in my backpack on the flight here, I, I'm, I'm cleaning up my notes. I spent three hours at this $10.5 million listing going room by room. And this is the technique. By the way, I don't memorize types of woods and stones. I wish I could tell you that. Ask the owner. So Marcus, if you don't mind me asking, what kind of paneling is that? Is that, is that American cherry or just cherry? Ask the owner, they'll, they'll tell you. Or better yet, you can say, hey, Marcus, do me a favor. I, I, this is a team effort here. You know your home better than I do. I'd like you to go room by room through your home and just chicken scratch it, that's fine. But talk about the unique features of each of the room, the flooring, what type of materials, if there's anything that pops out, the stonework on the fireplace, anything that's unique. And then what I'm gonna do, Marcus, besides that nice hardbound brochure I showed you, we'll take your notes, we'll put them in our template, we'll pretty it up and, and we'll work with you on that and we'll put together our special feature sheet. So now the owner just told me that those are American cherry. And then in the foyer, those were Jerusalem uh, limestone, uh, stone in the, in the walkway and those are blue stone on the outside. Because let's be honest, be, raise your hand if that's one of your concerns with up, upper end and luxury. Like, what if they ask me, hey, what kind of wood is that? Anybody? Yeah, I, I know. I, I was worried about that, too. Very rarely. Okay. They will ask you that. Am I telling you it's good for you to know, though? Yes. Eventually, you'll learn. But don't worry about it. Because many of you, that's what's holding you back. Unique features. Look at it as if you couldn't make it. Like I have a $1.8 million listing. There was a second showing today. I had a buyer's agent on my team there for the second showing because I can't be there today. We have unique feature cards throughout the house. So that agent, Niles, could literally know nothing about the home, but he could take a tour. Now you don't want it to look like a NASCAR event and there's sticky notes all over the place, okay? So be selective where you choose stuff, okay? This is one of my go-to, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. Let's use Dan as an example. Dan's a seller back there of a $3 million home. Dan, there's really two options when selling your home. Option one is gonna be much easier up front, and, and maybe initially it's gonna be up front. It's gonna be a lot easier. But usually it's best for maybe a divorce situation, people that don't wanna invest any money in the home. You're usually gonna make a lot less, and it will take longer to sell. So initially it's less stressful, but in the long run you'll net less, and it will take longer. That's option A. It might not be an official as-is sale, but it's easier. Maybe to, uh, you're just doing some cosmetic changes. And the second is a little bit more uh, diff difficult up front. There might be some small investments, some painting, some power washing, landscaping, but your home will sell quicker for more money. Now, I might not be able to ask more for your home, but you're not gonna have those excuses and as many lowball or any lowball offers because we've taken objections off the table. So which option is better for you? Less stress, but net less, or maybe a little inconvenient stress takes a couple weeks, a month to get ready, but you're gonna sell faster and you'll make a lot more money, which sounds better to you. Okay, so I like giving them the option, okay? They might say, hey, I, get, I gotta get that darn thing sold. It's nasty, my, sheep, my, my ex ain't gonna put a dollar into us. Just price it to sell, okay? Captain Obvious, hotels.com. I, I, that's what I talk about. All are, is there anything Captain Obvious about your properties? The sellers are here, they don't see it. They don't smell Br Brutus's dog hair, okay? They don't see the urine and, and, and the carpeting because they walk by it every day. You have to tactfully let them know about it. You see, I, I don't mind the, the, the dog piss on your carpeting, excuse my language. That doesn't bother me, okay? I have dogs, we have two puppies, okay? But some people are sensitive to animal smells. So although it's not a problem for me, it's gonna be a problem potentially for someone else, okay? So again, you're not the bad guy. Market research is, write that down, market research. Market research is the bad yeah. guy. You see, I don't have a problem if you leave your dog stuff out or your cat, I have two puppies, okay? But market research suggests that if people see there's evidence of animals here, there's people that are hypersensitive to allergies and they have kids or whatever. So I don't have a problem with it, but it's not about me or you. It's really about what's gonna get your home sold faster for more money. Market research is the bad guy, okay? Keep in mind the five senses when you represent a seller, hearing, smell, touch, vision, taste. All right, I'm gonna fast forward to some of these. 
Know your numbers. You got to know your numbers. Most people are terrible at math. This is a great slide straight from my friends at Keeping Current Matters. Uh, if you want to try a two week trial for them, it's trykcm.com forward slash luxury. If this was one, if there was one slide that I would use more than any slide on a listing appointment or pre listing package, this is it right here. It keeps it so simple. What do we got coming up? They just had Cyber Monday or, or, or Amazon Prime Day last week. What's coming up the day after Thanksgiving? What's the name of that? Yeah, I knew that. I knew the name of it. I'm just making sure you're Black Friday. People line up outside of Best Buy. They pitch tents to get a flat screen TV at a good deal. Limited supply drives up demand. Keep it really simple. That's what real estate's about: supply and demand. Not a lot of supply. Home prices go up. There's demand for that. That's what we call a seller's market. A balanced or neutral market is about five or six months. Seven or more months of inventory is a buyer's market. Remember earlier, I told you how many months or years of inventory on the $10 million price point in Chicagoland? 20 years. When I, when I showed this, not, not 20 months, Mr. 20 years. So do you want to do the same things as everybody else and just list it or do you want to do some of the proactive things and and get some power washing done and get the deck retreated and 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 do all these things knowing your home is either going to sell right away in the first three to six months or it could take three to five years all right i'm gonna fast forward a little bit but this is a great line great line mr and mrs seller it doesn't matter what i think Personally, I like your pink wallpaper and all your brass fixtures. Oh yeah, I know brass is coming back. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I don't have a problem with it, but it doesn't matter what I think. What matters is what the market thinks. You see the way you live in your home, Carrie, and the way I live in my home, that's our own personal style, our decorating, okay? But we have a small, minute number of buyers that are looking in your price point to begin with. Now, we even have a smaller number of buyers that love your style and your color. So would you rather, when we go to market, that I at least market to a larger pool of buyers to increase the likelihood of getting your home sold or a smaller carry? Okay. See what I just did? I'm, I'm not playing the accordion, right? Use visuals. I'm Italian. I use my hands a lot. I'm giving you guys ideas, okay? Selling a car. Anybody have somebody that, uh, a, 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 an adult kid, they just uh, graduated and they moved to the city? Anybody in this room? Somebody role play with me. Ashley, let's say, are you Ashley? No. Oh, what's your name? Debbie. Debbie. Debbie, let's pretend that you have a, a, a son that just moved to New York, New York. And you got a lot of money, Debbie, and you're a great mom, and you've done really well for yourself. And, and you bought them an Audi going uh, for their college graduation gift. And they're a year out of college, and they just took a dream job in one of the major cities. And they don't need to drive. Parking's terrible. You ever park in the city? You get dense things, all that stuff. Chicago. Sh uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you'll get your wheels taken too, but that's another story. So, so Debbie, let's just say that you were going to sell your daughter's car for her, and that was going to be some money to put down on her first condo. Okay. One option would be you take it up to Turtle Wax and they buff it out. They, 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 they clean it. They shampoo the upholster, the inside, the, the carpeting maybe throw some uh, extended warranty on it, maybe new tires. Let's say it costs you $1,000, but you can net $5,000 more, or you just sell the car as is, what, and she's gonna net less. Would you invest 1,000 to make 5,000 more, Debbie? Absolutely. Then why wouldn't you do that on your $300,000 home, your 800,000, your 9.9 .9 million, whatever it is. You gotta invest, write that down, not spend. You gotta invest money to make money, Debbie. Okay, you've made money in the stock market, I presume, right? No. Okay, I'm just role play oh. with me. No, oh. okay, okay, you haven't. Well, some people have, Debbie. And what, usually what they do is risk reward. Okay, is there a, re, a risk that you invest a thousand and you don't get back? Yeah, but market research suggests that today's buyers, they want turnkey. Do they? Yeah. Or do you, we get a lot that will take a fixer up or so. So every market is different, okay? Mm -hmm. So in your case, your market might be a fixer-upper market, okay? So in your market, you know this better than I do. If you had a fixer-upper for 500,000 and you had a turnkey that maybe that 500 is gonna need 150 to look good, 
mm -hmm. and you had a turnkey that's move in ready 625 ish i don't know about you but some people aren't hands-on i'm not my wife laid hardwood floors a month and a half ago i didn't i didn't know what i was doing okay so my point is you are right some people want a good deal and they'll do phases other people like turnkey nar national association of realtors say the majority of buyers do want turnkey mm -hmm. they want to move in and kick up their feet and not do a darn thing but you might have a different client database a mix of it so yeah. so yeah or just slap on some paint and yeah i'm going to fast forward here we got 15 minutes and i got to get to the meat of my presentation write this down as large as you can on your slide or on your notepad 10 percent 10 percent of buyers agents 10 percent of listing agents 10% of buyers can visualize. Said differently, 90% can't. So that we buy ugly houses, yellow sign you see when you drive down the interstate, they're looking for those ugly houses because they know most buyers can't see past it. But those rehabbers, they go in there, they cut some landscape and they slap some paint on it. They do their thing and they turn it from a mess to success. I'm going to go through this very quickly right here, but staged homes sell quicker and for more money. I'm a big believer in the power of demonstration. The power of demonstration. Tell good stories and demonstrate. That's why I have these books, okay? That's why I have books, but more importantly, I have these examples. This is a taxidermy example. This was a house that I went on in June. It was in June. They had over 100 taxidermy animals, stuffed animals killed animals that are stuffed, okay? A polar bear, a lion, okay? So these are the kind of things I do. I do before and afters. So you see here, this is the main, oops, the family room, okay? Look at this. Look at the before. There's over 30 animal heads in here. The right is kind of a pottery, uh, more of a pottery barn look and feel. My client was 80 years old. Do you think she liked pottery barn look and feel or, or no? But she threw me the keys and say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. You're the expert. That's what you want to do. You want to build yourself up that they trust you. And if you tell them left, they go left. Okay, that's the key. All right, so I'm going to fast forward here. This is a house, the top is before, the bottom is right. You need to develop your own before and after pictures. So when you go on listing appointments, take photos with, even with your phone, the before. Create a portfolio of before and after. Here's the family room before and after. Here's the office, before and after. Here is the dining room, before and after. I'm going through these quick. Here's the lower level. Most stagers will stage the main level and the master bedroom, or the, excuse me, the primary bedroom. Again, I like stagers when they stage the lower level. You guys have basements in, this, in your markets? Some do, some don't. I know we got people from all over, okay? I stage the outside. In the Midwest, stagers don't stage the outside because we get a lot of snow. It's cold, it's windy, windy. Guess what I did? I borrowed three friends' outdoor patio sets with my box truck. I had two interns from the University of Chicago. I, they drove my box truck, I followed them around. They lifted the, the big muscles, football players. My truck, in my truck, I staged the outside for the photo and the video shoot. The next day we returned it to three separate of my buddies' houses. You think I tell that story in a listing appointment? You're darn right. I'm willing to do the things that the competition doesn't even think of, let alone willing to do, okay? This was the house I just sold for 4.75 million. It was rumored that Kanye West was the buyer in this home. It wasn't true, okay? The previous agent, you could see the previous agent, beautiful photo, but the whole house wasn't even in the photo. So I used the drone shot, okay? Look at the sitting room, beautiful. Looks like it's out of Lux Magazine, the top photo. But you as an agent need to know what the focal point of each of the rooms are. The beautiful fireplace is, okay? Here is the top, is the before, the bottoms after. I got an 11, 10, and eight year old. I wouldn't let my kids in that top picture. Don't touch anything. Beautiful, but it's so formal. Doesn't the bottom picture still look beautiful, but more warm and inviting? Let's watch the ball game there. There's the office. Have you ever walked into a house and the pictures, coloring in the pictures doesn't match? Okay, so it wasn't dark brown, it was more cherry. Okay, the theater, use that boxbrownie.com for a dollar sixty. You can get an image. Never show a home theater without an image on it ever again, please. Okay, 
Here's a very ornate cellar. I'm Italian, so I can tell you this story, but it got a lot of um, Murano glass and it's got this Italian kind of look and feel on the inside. Look at the picture before and after. I softened all the hard stone by bringing in some cars, just, okay? Because otherwise it's stone on stone. Do you ever give a, a seller a list of things to do before the photographer shows up and you show up with the photographer and guess what? They didn't do anything. So I had to move everything out of the family room, put it in front of the house and, and then they took the inside photos and then we had to lift and put everything back. Again, be willing to do things your competition isn't. Have you ever gone to a home and there's like a dead animal, like a taxidermist animal there? Now I'm gonna show you a selfie here in a minute. Don't be offended by one, but they'll ship about to show you. The owner did not want to get rid of the lion and the water buffalo. So guess what, box brownie? That's for four bucks, they'll remove two items digitally for you. There I am with the, the lion in the middle, but you'll see there's a water buffalo and, a, and, and, a, and a, a, a lion, and I had it digitally removed in the after. Now I disclose, disclose, disclose. I didn't disclose up front, but I disclosed at the showing, just giving you a heads up when we go down to the lower level, there is, you know, so I disclosed, okay? <laughs> Eight bar stools in the picture to the left. You talk about clutter, okay? Look at the, the video gaming machine. Uh, you, above the fireplace on the left, they had White Sox jerseys. Less is more. Differentiate yourself. There's me, there's my kid playing hoops. That was the actual picture in the multiple listing service. Does it, the sport court on the right look alive? Can you see yourself playing with your grandkids or kids there versus the one on the left? All right, the Nashville mansion. There's, I told you we took our class through that. And this home, I'm going to tell you right now, was built in 1999. You look at these before pictures on the left. Look at the pictures on the right. I used Box Brownie to digitally renovate this home. Okay, so if you ever work with investors, rehabbers, or the seller's dead broke, but you, you, you they, they don't, they don't want to give uh, money into the house. They don't want to sink money into the house. But what they will do is they'll give a credit. Here you can get some after photos created, get estimates from contractors, then give a credit. Okay, is it Lena? Lana or Lena? Lana. We're friends on Facebook. Yes, yes. So, so Lana, Colorado. Yes. So Lana, what, what, we, what we do right here is we would get examples and get estimates. And I'd say, if you were the buyer's agent, you know, my client didn't want to invest a ton of money in things in case the buyer changed their mind or wanted something, or maybe they like it as is. So worst case, we'll give you a decorating allowance. But if you do like the look in the photo or on the easel board, maybe you're giving a tour of the home and you have some easel boards up, our MLS will allow us to put the rendering. I show both and we have to disclose in our multiple listing service, okay? It's up to you. I would show maybe the, the before and the after or maybe show the best one first than the other. You got to check with your broker owner on what you can and can't do. All right, I'm going to fast forward. I got to go through these quick because we haven't even gotten to, that's boxbrownie.com. All right. I told you that earlier. Both Democrats and Republicans buy large houses. Be careful about talking politics. You got the listing. Woo. Got the, come on, come on. You got the listing. If let's imagine the, tr the biggest trophy listing in your market, you got it. What would your reaction be? Woo! That's it. I want to hear Carrie, you just landed Alex Smith's listing he, and he's going to sit down and give you a testimonial on how you're hardworking. What are you going to do? Crush it. Crush it. You're going to be excited. You got the listing. What are you going to do now? Number one, are you priced right? Are you at their price or yours? because I could get the Goodyear blimp. I could take out the full sp spread ad in every publication imaginable, but if you're not priced right, it doesn't matter. Michael Jordan, his home's been on for nine years, nine years. I would have thought a billionaire bought it, 14,855,000, still isn't sold. So you have to be priced right, your price or theirs. I'm not gonna lie to you, I list homes was 10.5, my price, probably eight, nine, okay? However, we're within the margin of errors and I already managed your expectations. We're gonna test it out for a little bit at 10.5, but we have to adjust because it doesn't matter if I think you're worth 10.5, the market's gonna tell us where we should be priced, right? The market, the market dictates price. Not what you have into it, not what you'd like to get out of it, not what the, 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 the appreciation rates have done over, 
the market will tell us if we're priced right. Property launch, you're ready to go. When you hit that live on the MLS button, you know what I'm talking about, the launch button? You gotta have your ducks in a row. I like to do a social media piece. Now check with your MLS because of the coming soon and, um, and all that, but even the day of, you can, if you're listening at three, you know, at noon, talk about we're listening to home at three o'clock today. This home features A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Anybody who guesses the actual closest to the price without going over like the price is right, wins or gets a high five, gets a Starbucks card, whatever. Now you post something instead of a just listed for 899,000, you do coming to market today. What do you think the price is gonna be? You get more interaction, you get more shares, okay? You might tell the seller ahead of time, hey, we'll know if we're priced right just from this strategy alone, I might get a lot of 700, 600s and we're going on at 899. Hey, we'll test 899, but just so you know, the initial feedback from my sphere locally is that we're overpriced. Coming soon, I know that you can't do that in a lot of markets. Is your listing optimized in the multiple listing service? Most agents are terrible at this. They're leaving out key data. They haven't uploaded key disclosures or, or, or information. Now, when you're dealing with luxury, you might not want to put floor plans. I have some luxury sellers. I don't want the floor plan out there. I don't want uh, you know somebody surveilling it, right? Uh, I had my big eight point, well, now it's seven five, but it was eight point five. Somebody said, "Tell me about the security. Does it have cameras?" I said, "Yes, it's got a lot of cameras. That's all I can say." You know, I mean, what? Oh yeah, there's one around here. There, I mean, what, what's he thinking? That's another story. All right, fresh eyes, fresh eyes. I speak at a lot of conferences, and we always ask the audience members to submit their stale luxury listings. Stale meaning not getting showings, not getting feedback, the sellers on your rear end about doing something different. You should have top advisors, top agents in your market give you no BS, fresh eyes analysis on your own listing. Sometimes we're here and we don't realize that others see things that you don't, okay? Top agents, do some reverse prospecting. Okay, I, I noticed that you've sold the last three properties in this area. I have a new listing coming on. Keep it in mind for any buyer. Okay, I love single property websites for all my properties, single property. I buy unique URLs. I like .infos or .coms. 123.com is, uh, mainstreet.com is taken. 123mainstreet.info, okay, I-N-F-O, info, okay? I like great print collateral, it's important. It helps you get the listings, differentiate. Those buyers might be sellers down the road and they kept your collateral because it's so awesome. Maybe they use you to sell their home. It's not why I do it, but again, special feature sheet, unique features, just listed postcards. I love events. I know during COVID, you can't really have events. I love events at my properties, unique. I don't do broker opens just to do an event. I tell a seller that just brings the dead broke agents that want water. I literally had a broker, broker, a broker open once and an agent didn't even tour the home. She toured the first floor only, not upstairs, not lower. And I saw her putting food on her plate and a napkin over it like she's taking the food to go. I, 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 you don't know me that well, but I call a spade a spade. Hey, excuse me, um, th that food is kind of as a thank you for people that tour the home and fill out the survey. I didn't say that to her, but I in so many ways did. So she filled out a survey. I'm not a food pantry, I'm, I need your feedback. All right, <laughs> digital marketing. Digital marketing is important. I like digital marketing. There's a broker. The only reason I do a broker open ever is to get the survey filled out. And question number one, in your opinion, what should this home be listed at? And question number two, in your professional opinion, what it will sell at? That's the only thing I really care about. The other stuff is all smoke and mirrors just to give it to the seller. But question one and two. So Carrie, I know we talked about 899 and I don't have a problem with that, but ultimately the market's gonna tell us. You know, today we had 13 agents come through. Out of 13, 11 of them thought that we should be below 850. One of them actually thought below 800 and the other thought we were priced right. So again, the early feedback from the agents that work with buyers is that we're overpriced. All right, uh, other strategies. When you list properties and you put videos up for properties, tag them, have great descriptions, have amazing thumbnails. Thumbnail is the image before you hit the play button. You know, if you upload a video to YouTube, you can upload your own custom thumbnail. Most of the time, YouTube will grab a, an image from the video 
no offense, it's not very good. So if you're not creative, just upload the main picture from your multiple listing service for the home, okay? Your experience. I have water, I've bottled water now in today's age with COVID-19, you know, bring booties, bring a mask in case they don't have it, hand sanitizer, water, food. I sold a home that had one of the best wine rooms ever. We offered a bottle of red wine, white wine, and five cigars because it also had a humidor to every buyer that came through. Now, mind you, it was a $2 million plus listing, so we get one showing every month or two, okay? But be willing to do things your competition isn't. Again, the sellers should be on your team. I'm gonna tell you this quick story. Has anybody ever heard of the reticulator activator? A couple of people. It's a part of your brain that heightens your awareness of certain things. Pregnant women, notice other pregnant women. You buy a new car, you see that car all over the road. You're wearing a, a Washington football team jersey, you notice other Washington football team jerseys. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you're gonna hear more and more people talking about buying or selling because you're going through the process. People are going to know, even if we don't put a sign in front of your house, that your house is on the market. Let your kids post things. Talk about it. Because wouldn't it be nice to pick your next buyer? I'm going to fast forward. Okay? Think about safety. Think about security. Ask the buyer's agent for proof of funds or a letter from a, a banker ahead of time and let them know, I'm going to call to verify. Not that I don't trust you, but we've had fraudulent letters. This was a fake letter I got recently on my $6 million listing. Okay? had the guy's email address was Gmail. There was no phone number on here. I had to do some research. It was a fake letter. I got like two more minutes. I'm going to be over by two. Is two minutes okay, Carrie? Two? No. Two, okay. Okay. Pre-sell the agent. Pre-sell the agent before the showing. I like to know about the, the buyer ahead of time, but I want the selling agent, the buyer's agent, pre-sold on mine. Maybe they're showing five others. I want to give everything on a silver platter so they know what's unique about this. They know everything. I've sent it to them in digital form, digital form, excuse me, but I'm also going to make the assumption that they were busy and they forgot it. So I bring it at the showing as well, the physical, the, the video, everything like that. All right, so let me fast forward here. All right, I, I told you real quick. Here's my contact information if anybody has questions. I'm going to be sticking around for maybe about a half hour, 45 minutes. Uh, I don't want to take away from any other presenter, but I am going to stick around a little bit. And if anybody is really interested, I am the founder of the Lux designation. We are doing a live training next week. It's also going to be recorded if you can't make it. Our designation is 597 bucks. It's not cheap, just like Carrie offers and Dan some amazing services. If it were cheap, you, you know what you get when, when things are cheap. It's an investment. We're giving $100 off. If you use the code LUX, you can go to luxurydesignation.com. If you go to luxurydesignation.com, this is what's included. It's 16 modules. First seven modules are what I talk about attracting more listings. What can you do to attract more listings? Modules eight through 16 are more in depth. I just had an hour and I couldn't even cover anything. There's 10 and a half hours of video training. Use the promo code LUX. That's, you can take a picture of that if you want, the luxurydesignation.com. I have case studies after case studies. This gentleman's got my free content with my podcast. If you imagine having me on your team, there's private Facebook group and all that good stuff. If you see value, you can see me later. I have one last gift here, and it's for the person that flew from California. Okay, I don't know about you, but flying from one coast to the other coast, that tells me you're pretty dedicated. So I appreciate you coming all the way out to Carrie's event and Dan's event, okay? Woo! Folks. Oh, by the way, I'll throw in two more bonus items, but go to luxurydesignation.com. My name is Michael Lafito. And before I go, I wanna tell you two things. Number one, it is amazing how much you and I have in common. Okay, the media doesn't want to do, teach you that and teach me that, okay? It's amazing how much we have in common with our neighbors. Talk to people. I don't care how you vote. You're a human being. I'm going to treat you with respect. We need to be the leaders. We need to be the leaders. There's so much hatred out there right now, okay? I want you guys to be unifiers. I believe this, what I'm about to tell you. When on my grave, if they had number of lives infect, uh, affected, number of lives affected, that's why I'm doing what I did. That's why I had an emergency babysitter to watch my kids today to, so I didn't let Carrie and Dan down because I thought I was going to be doing this virtual. I, uh, where's Elise at? 
Elise told me last week, she said, there she is. She said, ring, ring. She goes, uh, tell me about the materials you're going to have for today. And I'm like, what do you mean like a PDF? She goes, no, when you're on stage. I said, when I'm on stage, like, are you expecting me to be in Virginia? Yeah, you, you said, you're, I dropped the ball. I dropped the, but my point is, I am more committed, okay, to my family, obviously. But my point is, I want to raise the bar and I want to affect lives. You guys have the responsibility of not telling sellers what they want to hear, but what they need to hear. I'm honored that I had your time today. Thank you, guys. Question. Okay. Very, oh my God. So, oh my God. I, I just have to be careful because it is listed with another agent. Okay. It's been the same agent for over eight years. Now, I don't know about you. I'm sick of the same seller after eight months, let alone eight years. Okay. <laughs> eight years. Our multiple listing service does not have a photo limit quality. In other words, you can put 50. I have one listing with 111 photos. It's, it's 15,000 square feet on three acres. So I'm doing unique shots. Do you know how many photos a 14.855 million for superstar Michael Jordan's had? So I don't know, but my six, okay. One for each championship. See, that's brilliant, but it hasn't worked, right? So you got to do a fresh eyes analysis. You got to get outside perspectives for, for, for a lot of people. So I, I know Catherine, she's a, she's a sweetheart, she's a great agent. Um, so I, 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 it's a slippery slope, I can't, uh, you know, I got a hot mic, okay? But bottom line is I do believe our job is to position a home so that the vast majority of people can visually see themselves moving in. Our job is to accentuate the best features and downplay the least favorable. And I feel like I can do that better than anybody in the industry. And uh, this is the last thing I'll leave you with, okay? Is this okay, a bonus item real quick, Carrie? We were talking earlier, this 23-year-old new to real estate wants to break into luxury. One of the things, if I were you, that I would do if I'm doing Facebook Lives and I'm attending other people's broker opens at high-end and luxury homes, or you're hosting an open house or somebody else, when I'm doing a video, I'd always say, or I'd end it or start with, hey, don't forget, if you know of somebody that's sick and tired is sick and tired, their home's been on the market, the only time they hear from another from an agent is to lower the price. We give out second opinions all the time. Everybody's got different perspectives. Pass along my information, have them call me. Again, it's a code of ethics violation. If, if Marcus says, hey, uh, give my buddy a call, his home's on the market. But if Marcus passes along my information to his buddy and his buddy calls me and I don't tell Marcus, hey, have your, but Marcus starts the conversation. You talk to your broker about that, but that second opinion wording that I use, and I speak it out in general, a lot on my videos and my podcast, keep us in mind if you know of anybody that needs a second opinion. Man, it's like a magnet. I get those opportunities. You guys were awesome. I'm over. Have a great day. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hyper Fat Show. Subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest Hyper Fat Shows. And remember, we love reviews. Reviews help us bring better and better guests and improve our show. So give us the good, the bad, and the ugly. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we will see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you want to see more, click right here. And if you're new to this channel, click below to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out. And leave some comments about what you think on the videos. I'll see you next time.